Hi everyone! In the last video, we completed our environment using Terrigen's clouds, populations, and texturing features. And now, we're ready to render an image sequence to be used as the background for our shot. Over the next few videos, we'll take a closer look at Terrigen's render parameters and the considerations that go into determining the optimal render settings to use for a visual effect shot such as this, which uses many cloud layers and 3D object populations and has a camera that is moving through the scene at high speed. The rendering process is a complicated task to say the least. So in this video, we'll focus on the indirect lighting prepass that Terrigen calculates at the beginning of a render in order to be able to process the GI or global illumination of the scene. With this step in mind, let's look at the render parameters available to us. Click on the renderers button on the top toolbar to bring up the renderers layout. Terrigen provides two render methods to choose from, the standard renderer and the path tracer. The path tracer can produce better looking surfaces, such as terrain and 3D objects, but usually takes longer to render than the standard renderer. We tested both render methods for our shot, and the most noticeable differences were in the shadows, especially in the trees on the shadowed sides of the mountains. In these areas, the path tracer provided more detail and was slightly better at integrating the trees with the landscape. But since our trees are pretty small in frame and obscured by a fair amount of atmosphere in the shadows, we decided the benefit wasn't worth the extra render time for our final frames. So we chose the standard renderer. Whenever you instruct Terrigen to render a frame, one of the first things Terrigen calculates is the pre-passed data for the global illumination of the frame. These are the tiny bright dots that show up first in the render view window when you press on the render button. In order to render an image sequence, we need Terrigen to first calculate and save the prepass data for the entire shot. The data will be saved in a set of GI cache files. GI cache files provide a way for all of the frames to have access to the same global illumination or indirect lighting data, even if they're rendered on different computers. This is to prevent changes in the indirect lighting from frame to frame caused by small random variations in the GI calculation. The GI cache is saved in a sequence of files and each file is numbered by the frame on which it's calculated. However, this does not have to be calculated for every frame in the animation, because Terrigen can interpolate the global illumination data between calculated frames. For example, in our shot, we only calculated every fifth frame, and this is known as creating a time-sparse GI cache. The number of frames to skip between the calculated frames depends on how drastic a change exists in your animation from one moment in time to the next. These skipped frames do not have to be of a constant value. For example, in our shot, more GI data is needed as the camera rotates around the cockpit of the second aircraft because the point of view is constantly changing during that part of the shot. As compared to the end of the shot, when the camera and the three aircraft are all flying in a relatively static formation above the terrain. So at the end of the shot, we might skip more frames between calculated frames by as much as 10 or more. Click on the GI Settings button at the bottom of the render settings to bring up the global illumination parameters. Under the Prepass tab, the GI Cache Detail value determines the spacing between the GI sample points projected into the scene for the current frame. You can think of these sample points as a point cloud on the surface of the terrain, 3D objects, and in the atmosphere and clouds in the scene. Higher values mean that more samples are calculated, resulting in a more precise lighting solution and the more tiny bright dots appear in the render view window with less distance between them. The GI sample quality value is a multiplier for the number of rays cast outward into the environment from each sample point and affects the accuracy of the lighting solution and also how much data is stored at each sample point. Higher values result in more rays sent out, more data collected, and larger file sizes. The GI Blur Radius parameter provides a way to blur or blend the global illumination results from nearby sample points in 3D space by controlling the sample's point sphere of influence. Its effect is adjusted to the amount of GI samples taken. So for any given GI Blur Radius, it blends a similar number of nearby samples. The larger the value, the softer and smoother the results of the global illumination will be. But too high a value can dilute or wash out any details in the global illumination. The Super Sample checkbox takes more samples across the image, but reduces the amount of data gathered at each sample point. This can be useful when dealing with small or narrow objects like blades of grass, which may be missed in the prepass. 
However, the quality of each sample is reduced, so it might not be suitable for scenes where the lighting is difficult to sample. Under the Prepath tab, there are three GI cache file parameters you'll use depending on which stage of the render process you're at. The default setting of Automatic GI Cache No File means that each time a frame is rendered, the global illumination is calculated for that frame based on the detail, quality, and blur parameter values above. This is fine for test renders and still images rendered on one machine. The Write to GI Cache File setting is used to save the sampled data from each frame of the prepass to the GI Cache files. In Terrigen versions 4.5 and later, you can choose the types of sample data to save in the cache file by clicking on the surface points, Atmo, Cloud V2, and Cloud V3 Easy Clouds checkboxes. The surface points and Atmo Cloud V2 parameters instruct Terrigen to save the global illumination data for the terrain, objects, atmosphere, and Type 2 clouds in the cache file. This is the same type of GI cache file previously created in versions of Terrigen prior to 4.5. If these items are unchecked or disabled, then their sample data will not be generated, and they will not receive global illumination when the file is used later for rendering. The Cloud V3 Easy Cloud parameter instructs Terrigen to include the global illumination data for Type 3 clouds and Easy Clouds when saving to the GI cache file as well. The parameters for these cloud types are located on the GI in Clouds tab, which I'll cover in just a moment. If this item is unchecked or disabled, then Terrigen will not calculate the global illumination data for these cloud types when writing the GI cache file. Unlike the other items, these cloud types will automatically generate missing GI data on the fly if necessary at the time each frame is individually rendered. But each frame might look slightly different if the data isn't found in the cache files. Although a Type 3 cloud or Easy Cloud can be added to a project after the GI cache has been calculated, and it will still receive global illumination on the fly at render time, you will still need to calculate new GI cache files if you want it to affect the global illumination of the other items in the cache. After clicking on the checkboxes to include the sample data in the GI cache, click on the Save button to the right of the parameter and choose the location to save the GI cache files at. They should be located on a network that is accessible to all the computers that will need them for the final render. Make sure you put the characters %04D somewhere in the file name. This pattern will be automatically replaced for each frame number to create a sequence of files. If you have older cache files in this folder and you're planning to overwrite them, it's a good idea to delete them now, just to make sure there won't be any old frames mixed in with the new. If Terrigen fails to generate one of the files in the sequence, it's better to have a gap in the sequence rather than accidentally leave an old file. Once the location is set, return to the renderer's sequence slash output tab and use the Sequence First, Sequence Last, and Sequence Step to set up the frame range to render for the GI cache. Then, press the Render Sequence button to render the GI cache files. The Output Image file name and Extra Output Images parameters are ignored when the Write to GI cache file is enabled. After the GI cache files have been created, choose the Read GI cache files radio button and click on the folder button to the right of the parameter. Then, navigate to the location of the saved GI cache files and select one of the images. The Blend Mode parameter offers several ways to use the GI cache files. For an animated image sequence, choose Interpolate for Animation and set the number of files to blend to an appropriate amount for the shot. For our shot, we set this value to 5, which means for every frame rendered, the five closest GI cache files will be blended together. This blend mode gives more weight or emphasis to the GI cache frames closest to the current frame and provides smoothly blended global illumination that works well for most animated shots. The next tab we'll look at is the Image Pass tab. This contains settings which affect the final rendered image. When enabled, these settings apply no matter whether the GI cache is loaded from a previously created GI cache file or created automatically each time the frame is rendered. GI Surface Details, or GISD for short, is designed to bring out details or add definition in areas of the final rendered image, where indirect lighting is clearly visible and the GI cache does not provide enough detail. This is more noticeable in shadows, in other words, areas where there is no direct illumination. If we render with a path tracer, then we don't really need GISD, because the path tracer renders indirect illumination with subpixel precision but the standard renderer relies on the GI cache 
which might not have enough closely packed samples to produce a realistic image, and it could benefit from the effect of GISD. Technically, Terrigen calculates GISD by tracing rays a short distance from the surface point at each subpixel, adding and subtracting light bouncing between nearby surfaces in image space. It does part of this process during the render, and then completes it in a post-processing step when the render is almost finished. The drop-down to the right of the checkbox lets us choose between two lighting models for the added detail, either the global illumination model, which provides the most realistic lighting in normal situations, or the ambient occlusion model, which calculates lighting occlusion, but not additional light bounces, and therefore a less realistic result. The occlusion weight value determines the darkness level of the added detail. Higher values produce darker results, while low values diminish the effect. The bounce to the ounce value simulates the amount of light bouncing between nearby surfaces. Higher values can lighten shadow areas, and even add color values from nearby objects. The radius value is how far in pixels the added detail extends across the image. This also means that if you're making test renders with smaller image resolutions, you might need to adjust the value proportionally when you upscale the image resolution in the final render, but this somewhat depends on how much detail you get from the GI cache. When the fall off checkbox is enabled, contributions are weaker from surfaces further away from the pixel being calculated. When disabled, the effect is stronger at visually larger scales. All of the parameters under the GI and Clouds tab only apply to Terrigen's Easy Clouds and Cloud Layer V3 type clouds. Unlike the sample data for the surface points, atmosphere, and Type 2 clouds, these sample points are based on a voxel grid, one voxel grid for each cloud layer in the project. The Cloud GI quality parameter affects how accurately the indirect lighting for a cloud layer is calculated. Most of the indirect lighting for these cloud types is calculated in the pre-pass if a GI cache file is being written out, or in the final image pass in all other cases. Lower quality settings calculate faster, but may produce blotchy looking lighting, or unwanted changes in animation. Each entry in the parameter menu represents an increase in quality by doubling the number of light samples, which also increases render time. You might find that there is not much difference in render time between the first few settings, but then above some point, it starts to make a big difference as you increase the setting. There might be a sweet spot that's different from project to project. The Cloud GI Max Ray Depth value is the number of times that light can bounce between different cloud layers, or a cloud layer and the terrain, which also affects the accuracy of the indirect lighting. If there are many cloud layers in a scene, this value should be kept low, such as one or two, as it has a larger effect on render times when there are many cloud layers. The voxel scattering quality value mostly affects the final image pass. It provides a way to increase or decrease the number of scatter paths used to render multiple scattering of light within a cloud layer. Scatter paths are calculated for every sampled subpixel in the image that contains some part of a cloud, and more paths generally result in lower noise. The renderer uses other factors to optimize the number of scatter paths for each sample, but this parameter acts as an overall multiplier. Therefore, a value of 100 causes the renderer to calculate twice as many scatter paths as a value of 50. Sometimes higher values can result in faster renders because of the way the noise affects the renderer's adaptive anti-aliasing. But if the value is set too high, the render will be slower. Typically, the sweet spot is somewhere between 100 and 400, depending on the project. In the next video, We'll look at the render parameters concerning how Terrigen handles displacements and subdivisions at surfaces at render time, and how these individual settings contribute to the final quality of the rendered image. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching. 